Hello there and welcome back. Today we talk about two pedals that AC Noises sent me. Uh, two beautiful pedal and very very uh, useful for ambient exploration and not only. Uh, they are the AMA and RESPIRA. Both Italian words, AMA is love and RESPIRA is breathe. Uh, they are two very interesting takes in uh, uh, on a reverb pedal. The AMA is a, a reverb with a beat crusher and an oscillator, we'll see that later. And the Respira, uh, breathing, uh, is a shimmering reverb with a tremolo with different wave forms that you can select and you can tap tempo so it can create very interesting uh, rhythmical things that actually works pretty well as you just hear using uh, uh, the sequencer the whole sequencer when you have like a drone or some note then it's very cool to have a these interesting pulsating tones. We'll see that in a second. So, first let me thank AC Noises uh, for sending these two uh, guys. And uh, before going on, the usual way you can support this page, you can buy from the affiliate link down below, you can become a, a Patreon uh, subscriber. On Patreon I just do usually more in-depth uh, and share more ideas about creativity and music and the last and easiest way you can subscribe to this page share this contact that's completely free and very appreciated so let's go on to these guys uh, i decided to do a demo of both of them together because i think beside being two sort of creative reverb take they works pretty well together and actually it's very interesting to change the uh, position in the chain because the result could be uh, very different very interesting so let's start with the AMA um, by the way this is uh, the version 2 and both of these are a limited edition the color scheme is different and so pretty pretty cute uh, pedals um, Beside the, my first album with my previous band, Mr. Bison had a heart designed exactly like this, so it's kind of uh, relate to me. So, what happened in the AMA? Um, you have a few uh, simple control. Uh, you have a, let's start with the mix and reverb. The reverb, of course, add the, uh, the tail, how long the tail of the reverb is, so basically the decay. Uh, the mix, it's uh, a mix between the clean and the wet signal. Uh, it works, uh, let's just play, let me use some piano sample. As you can hear, there's the reverb and if you mix more, the uh, dry signal will uh, progressively disappear. It's a very simple, nice reverb, and it has been developed with Mastro Valvola, um, no, Mastro Valvola, yes, pedal uh, company. I hope I'm not wrong with that, but I'm pretty sure it is. And uh, the uh, interesting take is that first it has an oscillator, so you have, uh, as you can hear, let me hold. With this you decide how much there's oscillation in the reverb tail. And then you have the beat crusher. So once you engage a crush uh, thing here, you have after the uh, reverb a beat crusher. And you can decide the resolution and sample rate. Let's hear it. Mm -hmm. 
I really like using with this pedal the new sequencer from OP1 that is called Hold, especially when you use sample because you put down the a sample and then it will start looping, as you can hear. With this you are already able to create some very interesting uh, evolving ambient patch. I found out that the, the mix more than 50% it kind of start killing your volume so I usually keep it like this. And then one thing that I forgot to mention, that is ramp. Ramp basically, it's linked to the position of the oscillator. And whenever you keep pressing it, it will create a ramp and you'll hear what it does. So the lower the oscillator is, the more time it will create, uh, it, it will take to create this ramp. As you can hear, it's growing very, very slow in this case. But if it's here, it's faster. And this is pretty cool because you can create some accent. And you have to remember that the sample uh, and resolution, the bit, basically the bit crusher part, happens after the reverb. And that created this crunchy tail, lo-fi, that is pretty, it's pretty cool. This would be without. I have effects off on the, let's see if I, I have all the effects off on the OP1, so there's no other reverb except this guy. It's not a very strong, River per se, but it had a very nice touch. Let's play with I find that uh, while I, I don't have a lot of uh, beat crusher things, I use it quite a lot on the Octatrack and it sounds pretty great uh, with the Vermona. I find that this is very musical and it's it had a very nice crunchy tone. It's, it's pretty interesting to play with your hand. You have an expression pedal that uh, works with one of the two controls. I don't remember which one. So you can do that or you can just play with your hand as I like. So this is about it for the AMA. It's a very simple, straightforward pedal, mono, of course. This is all mono, I forgot to mention. And um, it really match my kind of workflow and what I like to do with the, especially OP1 or the simple tool that I have. So let's move now to the uh, Respira. And let's go back to, let's do a drone because that is the best way to experience that guy. So by now, let's just have this. I 
I actually might be very wrong on what I said before, the collaboration with um, Mastro Valvola is not with this guy, but has been with uh, Respira. So, sorry for that. So, how and what it is the Respira? The Respira has a few things interesting going on. So, basically, it has two knobs here that decide your uh, shimmering reverb. So, it's mix and decay. And we can hear, let's hear first only that. So, let's go back. Let's just put one note. So right now I uh, remove the uh, um, depth, I can't see very well, uh, and depth is deciding the depth of the tremolo. So let's just add the mix, ah, first of course let's turn it on, right? As you can hear, the more you turn on the mix and the decay, you introduce the octave, plus one and minus one. This is without. And this is with. So this is the first part of it. And then you have all of this control that decide the behavior of the tremolo part. So first, as you can he see here, there's eight, two bank of eight waveform that you decide using this knob here from one to eight. And then with this switch, you decide which part of the bank. So we can start, for example, to hear better with waveform wave three, that is a square and we can start uh, adding it. So there's two ways to decide the frequency of the uh, waveform. One is by tapping, and then you start deciding the depth, and here it is. The other way is using the frequency knob. But let's use the tap for now. Then you have a, a clock divider here, so in this case uh, it's it subdivide your tap. So this is the how you tap and then there's this other subdivision. Then you have uh, this that is called symmetry. This is a very interesting um, tool to actually um, shape the wave because for example as you can hear let's put actually if you put it like this or like this is different so it's basically push the um, curve the f wave in two direction and with this you can create different uh, vibe then you have this knob that is a sort of uh, filter it's called tone and it depends on the mode that you're using here it works in a different way we'll see that later let's keep it like this so far and then you have this four mode um, one that was uh, work on the whole spectrum as you hear now when you call harmonic that works uh, with some phase uh, thing and so it's less um, present and it's a little more soft than bass and basically the tremolo works only on the bass frequency and treble so it works only on the higher frequency in this case there's not a lot of higher frequency so let's I added some and now you can hear so 
in this case, for example, you hear that the drone bass is stable. So it could be interesting to create interesting pulsating part on the upper frequencies. Or you can do the opposite. Keep the higher frequency uh, droning and create uh, the pulsating part on the lower. And um, in this case, in bass and treble, this tone, it actually decides how you feel the effect, more or less. And also it kills the lower end. So basically, the synergy of all of these uh, knobs create something very interesting. And then, of course, the, let's not forget that there's the mix and decay. So let's let's hear some different uh, um, wave. For example, wave one is a, a sawtooth, and I put symmetry in the middle. So basically, if symmetry in the middle, you will hear exactly the shape of the uh, waveform. This is flipped. This is a square wave. This is a triangle. Sign. Sign flipped. And this is a random. Now let's flip on the other bank. These are weird, different, um, weird um, waves, I don't know the name, so... See how we change with the symmetry, this one that is... And the tremolo seems to happen after the uh, um, reverb part. Let's go back to this one. This is a sort of uh, uh, ascending. It's nice. Let's use this. with some tune. As you hear now, I engaged the Hama 2, so the synergy of the two things is pretty nice. And you have this pulsation that actually had something. Let's listen if I have something else.
One thing you have to be in control is like when you do the ramp, if the oscillator is pretty high and the reverb is pretty high, it can result in a pretty uh, big spike of volume. So it could be cool to have a compressor maybe with the autobomb at the end that would tame that. So the strategy here having these after the AMA is like I can create this ramp and have the respira make this um, rhythmical pattern. It could be very nice. Let's now, just for fun, try to uh, invert the order and see what happens. not the out that's the <laughs> that was weird okay so now we will have on the end of the chain the uh, ama beat crash had a nice shimmering and there's this uh, pulsating thing let's make it slow and now let's engage the other So one thing that I noticed though, if you have the arm um, after the respira, it will be re really sensitive to the um, pulsating effect. So it could be interesting if you want to perceive that. But if you go stuff like very slow like this, Let's let's go back to some other interesting 
if I have some tune here that we can use to hear a different. Let's use this. So as you can hear, this is the clean signal. Let's maybe add engage the respira now it's working on the um, bass frequency Here the same but switch again the position of the thing because I think I prefer having AMA before I might make this faster in post-production or I might not all right let's hear it now I like the idea of having the tremolo part at the end of my chain. before you can find a sweet spot with the resolution and sample rate and create some sort of a interesting harmonics that then they will interact especially with the treble uh, circuit in an interesting way like now The oscillator can also self-oscillate and then it when it goes kinda out of control. Mm -hmm. 
but this is very nice. So this would be without anything, and it really had some kind of texture. And I keep finding very interesting sweet spot between resolution and sample hole that had some nice vibe to the composition. Well, I think I give you a quick, not very quick, but a good rundown of what this pedal can do. Uh, they sounds pretty great with guitar too but uh, there's a lot of demo and you can see that a lot. It's, it's very nice how they play with the um, acoustic instrument too, but my, mostly, uh, my workflow is mostly with synth. And I feel, as usual, OP1 is a great combo with this kind of uh, instrument because it allows you to have a, a lot of sound at your fingertip and start mangling with the um, pedal. Um, of course, these are pretty specific and unique pedal. Uh, they are definitely not your bread and butter uh, reverb. So as usually something that uh, it's great to add to your collection, the moment you have uh, some other basic reverb that cover all of your needs, then this can come in play. Um, of the two, I uh, really enjoy the rhythmical uh, part of the uh, respira it's something that literally when you use um, actually when you use uh, drone or simple chord can add a layer a, more, a new layer of interesting uh, sound so i would uh, between the two i would start with the respira because it had uh, would add a lot of uh, uh, dough to your sound and the amado has this very musical um, um, beat crusher that of course you is not usable all the time but when you need a beat crusher this is one of the nicest that I've ever heard plus the reverb itself is pretty nice simple doesn't have a lot of control just uh, the tail but it's nice When you use them together like this, it's very simple to find a simple chord that sounds already pretty good. And one chord can be enough to create a composition. Well, I hope this was interesting and thank again IC Noises uh, for sending these. I love the fact that you guys are Italian and yeah, I love the fact that these are very great for ambient experimentation. I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting and goodbye.